Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5-color Omnath Locus of All deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And we're definitely leaning into the multicolor theme here as you can see, as Omnath can potentially be cast for 4 mana and 2 life as a 4-4, saying if we would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes blank instead. So it's always good to end of turn float all the remaining mana, turn it into blank mana for the following turn, so it doesn't go to waste. And then at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase, we get to look at the top card of our library. Either way, that card's going to end up in our hands, so it's like drawing an extra card each turn. But if we reveal that card and it happens to have three or more colors, then we get to add mana in any combination of its colors to our mana pool. So that can also give us a huge mana boost and make it easier to cast the card we've just drawn, or potentially ramp into some other expensive card we already had in hand. So to make that happen, almost every non-land card in this deck has three or more colors in it, except for the early part of our curve, where we have some very efficient and removal spells like Source to Plowshares, Fatal Push, especially now with all the fetch lands to enable Revolt and Lightning Bolt. And then all the other cards are cheap ways to ramp, so we can hopefully cast Omnath on turn 3 if we manage to ramp on turn 2, for instance. We also have Delighted Halfling, making some of our legendaries uncounterable. Wayfarer's Bobble, I think, is still worth it. Can play it turn 1, turn 2, sacrifice it to get a basic. And then at 2 mana, there's Explore. We've got the Caryatid, can make 2 mana if we have a larger creature in play as well. Into the North, getting one of our snow covered basics. Lotus Cobra. Is also great if it survives and especially with our fetch lanes can generate a lot of extra mana. Paradise Druid is protected the first turn we activate it. Then a Gross Spiral puts a land in play. We've got a few artifacts that can also make one mana of any color, which is important when casting five color spells in this deck. So we can't really run mana artifacts that only make colorless mana. So we've got Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, and Ornithopter of Paradise. And then at 3 mana we've got a few more ramp cards. Of course ideally we can cast Omnath on turn 3, so ramping on turn 3 is not as desirable. But a few of these are still worth it, like Chromatic Lantern fixing all our colors, Cultivate helping us ramp, and then Faber Elder is a 2 color card, so it's not going to trigger Omnath making extra mana, but it is very good alongside Omnath, as Faber will turn into a 5-5 with Vigilance, tapping for 5 mana, so that can also give us a lot of extra mana to work with. And then the only other exceptions are at 5 mana with Mirari's Wake, which is another 2 color card, but it does help double our mana from our lanes, so that also makes it easier to cast our expensive spells and replay our commander if it gets answered. And then Golos, of course, is very powerful in any multicolor deck, especially when it can get our world tree to also fix our colors and then taking a look at our three color cards starting at three mana we've got nimble larcenist as a discard effect ravine can give us a lot of card selection and plus one counters through connive voidrend is an excellent removal spell that cannot be countered Corpse Appraiser can generate a bit of card advantage if a creature is in the graveyard. Maestro's Charm can help fill the graveyard and give us a bit of card selection to maybe help hit our land drops or find a specific answer. And it can also be used as removal, dealing 5 to a creature or planeswalker. Riveteer's Charm can actually provide card advantage, especially if we cast it end of turn, exile the top 3 cards, and then have a whole turn to cast those cards from exile, including playing a land. But it can also be used as removal, making the opponent sacrifice their most expensive creature or planeswalker. Incandescent Aria, a cheap sweeper dealing three to each non-token creature crackling doom can make the opponent sacrifice their largest creature while also dealing two damage teamer ascendancy also relatively new addition to arena giving our creatures haste and if a large creature enters we get to draw a card got Amazon Charm as a removal spell, exiling a creature with power 3 or greater, but can also draw two cards at the cost of two life. Kethys gives our legendaries a discount, while maybe replaying legendaries out of the graveyard as well. Mantis Rider can be nice at pressuring opposing planeswalkers. And then a Sultai Charm, another nice removal spell dealing with monocolored creatures, can also deal with artifacts or enchantments, or draw two and discard, so all three modes are pretty solid. And then at 4 mana we continue with Nicol Bolas the Ravager, which has immediate value when it enters, can also transform into a Planeswalker. Soul of Windgrace has recently been updated on Arena, so it's even cheaper to activate the various abilities, but we're mostly interested in a 5-4 that can get back our fetch lanes and help us ramp. Then Omnath Locus of the Royal also synergizes with Omnath Locus of All, which is another elemental, so we can deal a bit more damage. And then once we start ramping and putting extra lanes in play, we can get extra plus one counters and eventually draw extra cards as well. Siege Rhino, another classic, draining the opponent when it enters. Thalia and the Gidrock Monster, a 4-4 with First Strike and Death Touch, that lets us play an extra land each turn and makes opponent stuff enter tapped, while also potentially drawing when it attacks after we sacrifice. 
good Joda, which can potentially cast stuff for 5 mana out of our hand, which can give us a discount if we're trying to cast something even more expensive. Then there's Narset of the Ancient Way, making extra mana for non-creature spells, and the Minus can also discard something expensive to be used as removal, perhaps. And then Aragorn, the Uniter, is also great if we can cast some multicolor spells and trigger various modes at once. And then at 5 mana we already mentioned Mirari's Wake. Nicol Bola's Dragon God can be a little tricky to cast since it's triple black, but is very powerful once we do. Then a Borborgamos and Fibblethip lets us draw an extra card, potentially taking things out as well. Good Zergo and Ojutai, another nice 3 color card that can provide extra card advantage. Omnath Locus of Creation is nerfed now in Brawl, so it does cost 5 mana, but still very powerful if we get to combine it with our fetch lands especially. Then a Golos, as we mentioned. Invasion of Alara can also be a nice 2 for 1, especially if we transform it, it can take over the game. The Archangel, another card that can let us cast spells for free if we hit the opponent. And then the First Liver also provides immediate value thanks to the Cascade. And then moving up the curve, we've got the Kami War, another excellent 5 color card, giving us plenty of removal. And then a Chromium can be difficult to answer for some of the control decks out there, as we can turn it into 1 1 with Hexproof. We've got a Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh as another Nicol Bolas Planeswalker, and then we've got three different ultimatums, which is why having Chromatic Lantern or the World Tree fixing our colors can be useful, since otherwise it can be difficult to cast two of these with the same mana. And then Arunas Ultimatum, a one-sided board wipe, Genesis Ultimatum putting a ton of stuff in play, and then Inspired Ultimatum dealing five, gaining five, and drawing five. Then Doom Blast can keep our best creature on the battlefield and destroy the rest. We've got Atraxa providing a ton of value when it enters. And then a Meeting of the Five is pretty spicy in a deck with all these three color cards. And then a Zakama, Primal Calamity, can untap our lands if we cast it. And then has various abilities, including dealing with artifacts and enchantments, gaining life or dealing damage. And then the mana base almost builds itself. We've got one of each snow covered basic, all 10 of the tri lands, all 10 of the shock lands, as well as all 10 of the check lands, which will synergize quite well with the shock lands and triomes. And then we've got the world tree and command tower, potentially making multiple colors. And then the five fetch lands from Cans of Tarkir, which can also help get the triomes and shock lands. So those are also very good at fixing our colors. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing O'Hare Ashenil, so the red burn deck. Our hand has a couple okay tools. Fatal Push can take out some of the opponent's cheaper creatures. Faber Elder is unlikely to survive, but if it does, it's pretty nice alongside Omnath. So I'll give it a shot. Still gonna play the tap Triome. Can always Fatal Push on turn two. I want to avoid playing Swamp, since it doesn't help me cast a turn for Omnath. Alright, Grow Spiral's great. So we can uh, cast it and still maybe Fatal Push, but Punt's likely running out there for drop. Never mind, Flame Breather. Good target for Push. And then I don't mind trying Omnath, or we could wait, play Fabor Elder first. Although it is only going to be a 2 2, so it does die to quite a few burn spells. Whereas if we play it after playing Omnath, it's going to be quite a bit larger. I guess with Teamer Ascendancy, we can even give Fabor a haste. So that's also an option. Just go Ascendancy, and then next turn, we can maybe double spell. Sure. Chandra can deal 4 damage with their commander in play, which they could still cast. Okay. So I'm gonna get a Triome, one that can cast Genesis Ultimatum easily. Already have the Teamer colored one in play, so I'll just get one that's similar. Don't necessarily need more black, so Rogarin Triome will do. Okay, so stick to the plan, I think. So I'll be able to play Fabero, and then it's actually a 4-4, so it can even draw a card with the Ascendancy and still cast Omnath. 
Could also go after Chandra, and then our opponent probably takes a trade. So maybe it's time for Kami War and take out the god. It's a pretty interesting spot. Could also, I guess, just play Omnath. And then that'll gain haste and that can attack after drawing us an extra card. Opponent lets Chandra go, so they've got bigger plans. Well, we could certainly die here at 22. If we don't, we've got a nice turn lined up. Alright, Vampire's Vengeance cleans up Omnath. And finds some more goodies. This still only deals 1 damage to the Faber Elder. Does deal 4 damage to us. So Faber survives, that's a pretty big deal. So I can main phase cast Omnath for 6 mana. And then... This taps for 5, which is a little short of Kami War. So the safest play is to just uh, play Kami War here. Attack for 5. Don't get to play anything else, but next turn we can keep going. Bounce O'Hare. And uh, Genesis Ultimatum is tempting, so is Omnath. So let me just fetch for basic islands. Draw a card. Attack. And then we can still play Aragorn's second main. Including even a uh, arcane signet first. I guess uh, never mind. I should have been more careful with uh, mana tapping here, since it left a black mana which doesn't cast Aragorn. So the auto tapper got me. So our opponent can replay O'Hare, but they're empty-handed. And next turn we can certainly end things, especially with a hasty made manifest. Don't often get to attack with it. That's gonna trigger Ascendancy as well. And we even get to add extra mana. Alright, so we're really going off. Step on Aragorn. Yeah, we've got an embarrassment of riches and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Halavinia. And uh, our hand's a little too clunky, no ramp. Missing a few colors. This one is not great. We've got a double ultimatum and a meeting of the five in hand. But I can at least cast Maestro's Charm to dig for an extra land, try and cast Omnath. Although, let's see, Lavinia. Yeah, it does kind of shut down the mana from Omnath, casting something expensive. So I think this is a mulligan, sadly, because of what the opponent's playing. This I can keep. And then... Probably get rid of Ornithopter so it doesn't die to ruin Arya. And then we can start with Bobble. I'll just activate this now. And get a forest. And then I could cast Omnath next turn. Yeah, I guess uh, we could try that. And then there's always Kethys as a way to discount it next time. Since they didn't cast their commander, they probably have some interaction. Jory Disruption. 
back to the command zone with you. So I need to fetch a black source with windswept heath. Now a grab digger's cage, we don't really mind. Can also blow it up with Sultai Charm, but don't think that's a priority. So we want black mana, and our second color got double blue, plenty of red. So black white perhaps, or black green since we have a bunch of green cards in hand. Okay, so next turn we can try Omnath. Never mind. Swords are Kethys. Fatal push an answer to Lavinia. Although I might prefer to just Sultai Charm and then draw to discard. Or we can Arya to deal with Lavinia and keep Fatal Push as a cheaper answer for later. Chromium will be great once we get the mana for it. So I could main phase Sultai Charm to see if we can hit our land drop. We do, and a Teamer Ascendancy is great too. So discard, probably Fatal Push at this point. Void Ren's a bit more flexible. And this might get countered. It does not. They have a Disenchant. Yep, March for three. So any land that's untapped cast Chromium. Meeting of the Five is also getting close. Let's give this a try once again. Bones fetching for another counter spell. Memory lapse. All right, back on top, I guess. So we're getting tempoed out a little bit, but at least they're only getting in for two, as opposed to activating a Planeswalker. Playing the uh, Emiria instead of holding it to try and cast it is interesting. And now a Disallow. We're having fun. So... This at least cannot be countered, which is a big deal. And a Haughty Djinn. Okay. So we can play Lantern and then Void Rent Haughty Djinn. Probably should do it now before they make use of the discount. Now if we flash in Chromium and try and block Lavinia, the only concern is that if they have spot removal, they target Chromium, we transform it, then it will be a 1-1 with still 2 damage marked on it. So then it would end up dying. So maybe don't try to ambush Lavinia. But we'll see what they do. I think it's still worth it. And a Dovin, that's fine. So you don't want to activate a response. The is and then now cast Omnath. We're still in trouble if our opponent has a sweeper, since that does get around Chromium's ability. So this currently cannot deal any damage. Don't really want to discard my meeting of the five, so we'll let that happen. And a deck in stone answers Omnath. Alright, 
and see if we get to cast our meeting. Dovin's a little bit annoying since it does make it harder for us to actually cast the spells we exile, since they will all be taxed. Zergon Ochutai also tempting, can just take out Dovin. Also synergizes with other dragons. Although this one doesn't deal any damage at the moment. Yeah, I guess we'll just deal with Dovin. Never mind. Well, glad we didn't cast our meeting into a counterspell. Can still crack our clue. And, uh, Locus of Creation isn't bad either. Opponent is top decking. Now I could maybe consider discarding Omnath. So we just attack Dovin and cast our meeting afterwards. Do have to watch out for the creature land. Alright, let's go time. Dovin down. This is a rare occasion. I'm not often wrong. Lavinia also stops our Archangel's ability, interestingly enough. And uh yeah, we didn't exile many three color cards here. But uh, I'll take a Siege Rhino. I guess we can Doom Blast first as well here, but our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Aragorn the Uniter. Our hand has potential, thanks to Cobra if it survives. Could cast a turn 3 Omnath, turn 4 Golos. So can they remove Lotus Cobra? A red mana can certainly do so, but points got an into the north, so we both get to deploy our commanders on turn 3. Being on the play, of course, is a pretty big advantage. So whatever I choose here, it should not be black, so blue's fine. And attack for 2. So, big turn coming up. Can our opponent deal with Omnath? If not, can we reveal a multicolor card to generate extra mana? Well, looks like our opponent's double spelling Relic of Legends. And rip apart on the Cobra, not enough to take out Omnath. Found different Omnath and a land, so had the order been reversed, we would have been able to make extra mana. As it stands, I can still cast Locus of the Royal. And deal 2 damage to the opponents, and hit for 4. And our opponent can potentially cast Aragorn and something else in the same turn to get that immediate value. We're still hoping our Locus of All finds a multicolor card with the ability. Thabor Elder's great here. 4-4, four, four. and uh, found all Omnis, and we finally reveal a multicolor card. I guess I'm missing one black mana for Runus Ultimatum. So can't quite cast it, but uh, Kami War will have to do. And then Faber Elder could be scarier than Aragorn itself, since they can easily recast it. The next turn we can maybe bounce Aragorn with Chapter 2. Attack for 8. Cold Steel Heart is acceptable. Arcane Signet. And uh, no way to trigger Aragorn. And our opponent concedes. Next turn we get to bounce Aragorn and. Uh, Maybe even cast our Zergo and Ojutai as well, which might get us across the finish line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Quintorius, a Discover deck. And our hand is acceptable. Lots of early mana acceleration, a bit light on action, but hopefully Omnath can stick the landing. So we'll start with Bobble. And then I want to avoid getting lands that can't cast ultimatum basically so 
let's just activate Bobble. Getting Mountain is fine. Opponent's got the Mind Stone. And then I could play Narsets, which does help in casting Ultimatum. Could also cast Omnath. And that'll maybe generate some extra mana for us as well. But of course, susceptible to removal, more likely to get answered than a Planeswalker. A rip apart, plus another burn spell here. At least it was a two for one. A Lightning Bolt. Aragorn could be pretty good. Or we can develop our mana some more. So let's see, Narset can deal damage to Planeswalkers as well. Yeah, I'll play Aragorn. Could see Quintorius make a Spirit Token. And then we should be able to overpower it here. I would like to draw a couple lanes here. So they are both tapped, but it still seems good enough. So we'll add a red. So we can lightning bolt the spirits and then just attack for five. And that's enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kethys, and we've got our own Kethys in hand. So, this hand's not bad. The discount from Kethys, not super relevant with Nicol Bolas, but does make Borborygmos cheaper. For now, I don't think I'm in a hurry to play Halfling on turn 1, so we'll just play a tap land. And then we could cast a turn 3 Omnath. Yeah, that sounds appealing. No removal end of turn. And there's Kethys, so we get to untap with Omnath, hopefully revealing a multicolor spell, just to carry it hid. So next up, could play Borborygmos. If we draw a land, we can take out Kethys versus... Can I cast Nicol Bolas? Yeah, I guess uh, we can with a Halfling. So that's probably the way to go. And attack for four. Don't expect too many haste creatures, maybe a questing beast. But I don't know if I necessarily want to trade for Omnath. So yeah, Halfling putting in some good work. Opponent with a Davriel next. You should know I have standards, and I've yet to find an enemy. Always leads to some interesting situations. So opponent gets to draw three, the drawback being they have to exile two cards from hand. Okay. Reveal Lotus Cobra, had to uh, switch the order to get our mana there, so what's next? Can finish off Davriel, start by plussing Nicol Bolas, I don't think we're using Davriel's abilities. Soul of Wind Grace does not have a fetch line to go with it at the moment. So can go Cobra, play a land. And play Borborygmos. Finding another Planeswalker is good if our opponent does have a sweeper for our creatures. And yeah, opponent scoops it up too far behind. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play facing Gishoth, a dinosaur ramp, and we've got a keepable hand. Grow Spiral sets up maybe turn 3 Soul of Windgrace, which can get our fetch line back and start ramping. Haven't decided yet what to fetch with the Wooded Foothills, but can do so on turn 2. Now with the Ultimatum, probably want to get a land that can cast it. Well, we still need another land here. So I want a black-white land. So let's see. I guess black-white and green is fine. Alright, so now we can cast Soul of Windgrace. And get immediate value. So we'll sacrifice. Want to get another blue source, perhaps? Attack and play Omnath. And then we're potentially in a position to cast our ultimatum, but we've got some other great options. Reveal Atraxa, don't mind if I do. So let's see, we could cast Inspired Ultimatum and then still pay the ward on Hulking Raptor. Although we might have an even better option here with maybe Narset taking out the Raptor and we can cast something cheaper. Definitely have some options, but uh, yeah, her opponent concedes just to us revealing Atraxa and making three mana. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Haral, the is it a Viceroy. So, what do we think of our hand? Into the North needs to get maybe black mana for Nicol Bolas. Although if I get a Swamp, I wouldn't be able to cast turn 3 Omnath. So, our hand's a little awkward, but I think it's still keepable. Two mana ramp spell with three lands that are untapped. It's hard to turn down. Now we could also go for, uh, let's see, yeah, I guess Chapel still enters stamped right now. So that is an argument for getting Swamp. Even though if I get Mountain, I can maybe go for Aragorn early. This might just get countered, so it doesn't matter, but that resolves. Yeah, I guess I also need Red for Bolas anyway, so I'll get Mountain. And then hope to draw an untapped land for Omnath. All right, can play a Triome. And then Chapel will be untapped next turn. So not the fastest start, but our hand is powerful. So is Chandra. Zergon Ojutai only deals 4 damage. Although the first sliver might line up a little bit better here. Now Nicol Bolas can also destroy Planeswalkers with a minus, but can't cast it. So, first sliver it is. Hitting Carrotid. That one's unlikely to stick around. Yeah, Chandra would have lined up quite nicely against Omnath. Opponent's making mana, so they've got access to quite a lot. Kicked into the Royal, deals with First Liver. Not the cleanest solution, since we can still recast it, potentially. Which could imply they have a counter spell, but Cascade still triggers. So, I think I prefer First Liver over Bolas, even though we can now finally cast it. And if our opponent's gonna counter here. Sultai Charm. Cannot destroy Planeswalkers, so instead draw to discard. And Doom Blast is not looking great. So now 
Carotid actually taps for two mana, so I could play Faber Elder. Don't really want to get Swamp since it doesn't cast Genesis Ultimatum. I guess Blue Red doesn't cast Faberro is a problem. In that case, I get Red, Green. That seems fine. So I can cast Faberro right now. And the red still contributes towards Genesis Ultimatum. Okay. Opponent might have a sweeper here. Sanctuary gets back into the royal so they can hit it with Chandra if they'd like. And they're gonna bounce our sliver. Alright, so the dream now is to both cast First Sliver and Nicol Bolas, which might prove to be a little tricky. So let's say we cast our Sliver first, so Fibber Elder makes more mana. I mean, at the very least, we can still attack Chandra to slow down an ultimate. So I don't want to tap my black if I can help it. Let's just fetch first. And then we already have Breeding Pool in play, so could go for Steam Vents. Although I might want more black for uh, Nicol Bolas. Can get Blood Crypt. And then cast Sliver. Cascade. Hit Thal into the Gitrog, which lets me play an extra land as well. And grows Faber Elder. So, step one would normally be to attack first. But we are dealing with a blue deck here. They could have some tricks up their sleeve. I think I should still attack first. And then Karyotid can also attack Chandra just to slow down an ultimate in case they did have... Removal for Faberu. Alright, opponent did have a Soul Seer, so got punished a little bit for not casting Nicol Bolas right away. But uh, yeah, they could have had a counter spell left, I suppose. So now the floating mana will go away since we don't have Omnath in play. Probably fine to cycle the Triome, or I can just play it thanks to Thalia and set up an ultimatum. And we don't have to worry about a Chandra Ultimates. Yeah, I mean, we're still in good shape. But having a Nickel Bolas in play to answer Chandra would have been even better. Yep. You're going down. This is six mana. For Discover the Formula. Midnight Clock, two mana left. So Chandra should be able to get answered here. Yeah, Genesis Ultimatum is the most fun card here, although it could also get countered. So double spelling, maybe Aragorn plus Nicol Bolas could be more powerful. And then I don't really want any of these. And we'll just minus on Chandra. Alright. Could have also tried attacking Chandra. Now could be good insurance to just sack the Carotid in case your opponent does have a board wipe coming up. Opponent is at 11, so they will need something to stabilize. And yeah, Chandra Hope's Beacon is a good answer here.
answers Thalia and Aragorn. We're still pretty far ahead, and we haven't even cast our commander yet. Our hand's also looking great. So step one, activate Nicol Bolas. And uh, could just end the game if Zergund Ojutai resolves. And I guess I prefer double spelling as opposed to tapping out for Genesis Ultimatum. So let's see, I guess could also go for Omnath plus Siege Rhino. And then uh, Omnath deals one damage if it enters. Siege Rhino is another three. So that could be game. So a vintage Siege Rhino for the win. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, our hand is missing some mana acceleration. Facing Tiamat, so five color dragons. Opponent's also going to be ramping into their commander. I can play Mantis Rider, but it's not really what we need in this matchup. If we could ramp into Mirari's Wake, this hand would be great. But as is, I think I got a mulligan. This is better. Turn two, Grow Spiral. Hopefully turn three, Omnath. And then we want to fetch for a land that helps cast Ultimatum. Now Nicol Bolas, also maybe a priority. So I can get maybe a Mardu colored land. All right, let's give Omnath a try. The alternative would be Maestro's Charm to try and hit our land drop so we can maybe cast Nicol Bolas. But if we get lucky, then Omnath makes mana and we can still cast Nicol Bolas, assuming we hit a black spell. If not, then uh, we'll maybe Maestro's Charm to find a land. We can also take out Ornithopter with either Sultai Charm or Maestro's. Found a land, and we found Nicol Bolas, awesome. Reveal Nicol Bolas to cast different Nicol Bolas, could be the move. And yeah, opponent already concedes, so we've got 8 mana total this turn. Could also go Siege Rhino plus Bolas, but I think taking out Ornithopter is more important. So that means either Sultai Charm or Maestro's Charm, in addition to... Uh, Nicol Bolas, or we could just play Dragon God, which can minus deal with Ornithopter, and then uh, take it from there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Queen Kayla, and uh, our hand's pretty decent. Lots of early acceleration, maybe a little bit too much. Not sure yet what to fetch with Bloodstaymire. Something that helps cast Crackling Doom. For now, we could also just play Cold Steel Heart and then fetch a Triome. Yes, yeah, since we're not guaranteed to hit a land of Gross Spiral. And then, don't want to name Black since it doesn't cast Omnath next turn, but green is fine. Opponent with the boots to protect Queen Kayla. Although Crackling Doom still gets around it. So we could get the Seamer Triome. Sure. And then try and cast Omnath. Uh, 
there's Queen Kayla, that's fine. And a Mox Amber, so they can actually equip the boots right away, that's nice. Can we reveal a multicolor card? We sure can. And I get to make three mana. So let's see, three, six, seven. Yeah, I'm probably still gonna Crackling Doom and then maybe play Joda. And then Joda can help me cast the rest of my hands next turn. Can potentially even transform our Invasion of Alara the same turn we cast it. Sarah Paragon did not leave Queen Kayla in the graveyard. And we reveal another multicolor card, so yeah, we're going off here. And that's enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Soul of Windgrace, the updated version nowadays. And uh, what do we think of our hand? No mana acceleration. Fetch lands also help Soul of Windgrace. So I don't love this. This is better. So we're looking at Ornithopter, potentially turn 3 Omnath, but we could also play Faber Elder first. Opponent already has a fetch land, so now that we play Polluta Delta, it's not as much of a concern. Now a Jund deck can certainly have some removal for Omnath. And our opponent's got a Lotus Cobra. Yeah, there's an argument for just Void Rend on Cobra. Play a Lounge. And then next turn, try to make something happen. Since Cobra's going to be pretty strong alongside their commander. Incubation Druids next. Alright, so Fabor Elder versus play Omnath. Either way, play a tap land. And then I can save my fetch land to go with the Locus of Creation. I like that idea. And if they play Soul of Windgrace, they probably won't be answering Omnath. Do we find a multicolor card? We do. Awesome. So, how close are we to casting Zakama? 7, 8, 9. Yeah, I guess we can just cast Zakama here. Could even play, let's see, Omnath. Only makes 4 mana, so it doesn't quite allow me to play Zakama afterwards. But we can play Omnath after playing Zakama, so that all works out. And what land to get is not super important, and yeah, opponent sees a writing on the wall, we can cast Zakama, untap five lands, still cast Omnath, or maybe get Faber Elder in play, that's also pretty powerful, and that's enough for a concession. Alright, so we get to see Omnath in action, and I can certainly recommend the deck. It's not quite in the hell queue yet, so you're not facing the most broken commanders out there, which feels fair, because even though Omnath and the five color decks are powerful, the commander itself doesn't generate immediate value if you play it, so it is a bit more manageable than some of the more broken commanders out there. And then if we do get to cast an early Omnath and immediately hit a multicolor card, we can quickly run away with the game, but even if Omnath gets answered, we still have lots of powerful cards in the deck, so it feels like you always have a chance, which is nice. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.